Ladies and gentlemen, we're honored to hear from Dr. Tony Rupert. Good evening. We have much to celebrate. And as you know, you have graduated from one of the finest institutions of higher learning in this country, Anderson College. And consequently, we are mindful of what you went through to graduate. Rose and Sharon and Danny already indicated that this was important and, I'll take this out here, and <laughs> that we are proud of you this evening, it's obvious. But what's more important to realize as well is what you've overcome. So you've showed some determination and you showed some guts and you showed some courage. And so here tonight to celebrate your graduation. And what a great and fun evening this is. But we're also mindful, as, as Rose pointed out, of all the people that helped you. And we already said thank you to them, but I want you to know that sometimes you weren't very nice to them, as you probably know. You were pretty ornery, and then you were probably a lot under stress, and uh, as I think, as Mikkel indicated, some of you wanted to quit. Is this true? Some of you wanted to quit? Yeah, that's true. This was tough. It was tough going. So we're mindful of all of this. But let me tell you an interesting story. In the United States, there are 10 what's called special schools. They're called Ivy League schools. Ivy League schools. Wow. So one of the Ivy League schools is Harvard and Yale and Princeton. And Princeton, they did a survey. And in the survey, they said, we want to find out from about 10,000 students why some of these students who were graduating and came back again, and they were mature students, of why the mature students came back to school. And the overwhelming response was, because we want a better future. And I think we can all agree, that's why we're here today, and that's why you chose to come back and to graduate. But what it seems, as soon as you graduate, and as soon as you look for a job, you run up against what, what I might call the three horsemen of the apocalypse, and they are the doubt, am I going to be good enough? And not only doubt, but worry. And worry says, well, what, what about getting a job? Now, I will tell you something. When I was in uh, graduate school, too, and I got my MA from Wichita State University, I sent out over 100 application forms to various universities. Over 100, imagine that. Over 100, and two responded. So imagine, are you willing to do all of that? Are you willing to send out? A hundred resumes to get a job? Yes. In today's environment, that's what you have to do. And if you don't, you're going to be racked by doubt and worry and some grief and some problems. So I want to know you. I want to tell you that it seems that the whole world is almost against you, except you don't believe it. The whole world is conspiring to keep you low. The whole world is inspiring to keep you down. Now, why do I say that? I say that because we know we now have evidence, 100% evidence, that this idea of not being wanted, the idea of not being good enough, is already experienced by a baby or a fetus in a mother's womb when she's pregnant by six months. Already that program is downloaded, and here it goes. The baby feels, I should say the fetus, the fetus feels if it is wanted in that environment or not. The fetus feels through the blood that goes through the placenta to the fetus from the mother. It already feels, well, I may not have a father. I may have a problem. Uh, the worries of the mother comes right through the placenta and the baby already at six months begins to download the program of negativity. Wow, think of that. And then you go to school. Then you go to public school. And what do you find there? The teacher says, how come you are not fast enough? How come you're so dumb? How come you're so slow? Why can't you do better? What's the problem with you? Why aren't you good enough? Do you get the idea? And so the kids through the school system that we all go through, even sometimes it happens through the family. 
And they mean well. The family means well. So the mother says sometimes, oh, you were ornery today. You were bad today. You don't deserve that. And then it goes on and on. And then, of course, you have brothers and sisters, and sometimes they say, why can't you as good as your brother and your mother? I mean, brother and the, the sister. So what I'm saying to you is the whole process of negativity is already ingrained. And the problem then becomes this, do you believe in this negativity that gets to you almost on a daily basis? We know today that 70% of your self-talk, the way you look in the mirror and you talk to yourself, 70% of the self-talk that you go through every day is negative. Now the question then of course is, how do you begin to change that? How do you begin to change that self-image you have of yourself as a winner? Because that's what you want to do. We want in life to be winners in life. That should be our program. And so when we download these programs of negativity, we have to have something that says the opposite. It should say that we want joy. We want abundance. We want to be important. We want to make a contribution. That should be the aspect of what we tell our subconscious mind because we need it because we're running against so many negativities in our life. And so let me give you an example. You know there was a, uh, a uh, Dr. Maltz, and Dr. Maltz was a plastic surgeon. I'm not going to tell the story about uh, that I was supposed to marry Miss Venezuela because uh, Miss Venezuela, of course, was a very beautiful person, but she had, one, she had one problem. She looked in the mirror one day, and a big catastrophe happened to her, a big catastrophe. You know what it was? She detected the line in her face. Oh, my God, that's terrible. So right away, she's thinking how much it's going to cost to get rid of that line because she was, Miss Venezuela was a very, very beautiful speck of humanity. So think about that. That was a catastrophe. It's a line in my face. I've got to do something about that. Let's run over to the surgeon and get a plastic surgery. How much is that going to cost? Well, not only that. But then, of course, when you look in the mirror, and I can predict what you did about two, three hours ago. You know how I know? I did the same thing. And what did you do two, three hours ago? Even the men, you did the same thing almost. You looked in the mirror and you said, you know what? I don't like my hair. Or you say, no, I don't like my nose. My nose is too small. Or you could say, my nose is too big. Or you could say, you know what? I like a different eye color. My eyes are not, I don't like those eyes that I got. Let's run over to the plastic surgeon and get it all fixed. But here's the problem. The plastic surgeon, Dr. Maltz, he found something very intriguing. He made some beautiful noses. He made some beautiful faces. But what he found is some of the people had lives of beauty queens right after they came out of the surgery. But many of them, surprise, surprise, were just the same negative people as they were before the plastic surgery. Now, why is that? So here it is. The most important thing you can do is to do something about your self-image. Whatever you do in life, it runs against your self-image. The biggest indicator of success in the future of a child in grade six and grade seven, grade eight, the biggest indicator for the future is what? Their self-image and their self-idea of confidence. If you can't do that, it's very hard to be a winner. So this evening, I want to tell you, before you walk out that door, as I think, as Rose indicated, before you walk out that door, I want you to remember something. You have graduated. You are in the winning stream. So don't give up now. We're proud of you. Your teachers, your parents, your lovers, your aunts, your uncles, your whole family is proud of you. So you don't give up, but you've got to do something. You have to remember all the time that, yes, I can. You have to remember all the time, yes, I am a winner. You have to remember that all the time. Let me give you a quick story here, and that is this. Did you know that the major 
fact in modern medicine, the revolution in modern medicine, the revolution, revolution that's all new right now, the major revolution in modern science is this based on one fact. And what is that? Whatever emotion you feel, whatever slight emotion, big emotion, of course, the more intense the emotion, the more important it is for your body. But whatever emotion you feel, even the slightest one, in the end, ends up as a command to every cell to produce a chemical. So, if you are the jealous type like I am, well, I used to be more jealous than I am now, okay? When I was younger, I was more jealous. I said, this is insane. Don't be so jealous because, uh, you know, he kept on fuming. He says, who she's talking to now? Oh, look, it's my husband. He's talking to that woman. Oh, look at my girlfriend. Oh, by God, she's talking to... You get the idea. If you're jealous, you see through jealous eyes. So if you're jealous, a more of an important idea happens, and that is this, because you have that feeling in you. That means that every cell knows how you think. Every cell spies on your thinking. That means that all the environment spies the way you think. So if you think confidently, if you think positively, the environment knows. If you think positively, the people around you will know. So your job has to be always to think, when I have an emotion, every cell of my body is being instructed to have that chemical. So my friends then, in closing, since we know that you have done a great step in the direction of winning in life, you are here because you have graduated. Now your job is to get out there. Now your job is to say always, I can. Your job is to make sure that you always remember to be positive. But not only that, do something about your self-image because a self-image is your future. So when you look in the mirror, don't think about your nose that want to be changed. If you look in the mirror, don't think that you want to be taller, or you want to be shorter, or you want to be black, you want to be brown, you want to be white, or your color of your eyes should change. Don't think of that. Look in your mirror and you say, I am the way I do. I've got hands, I've got feet, I'm healthy, I can take on the world. And so I want you to say, I can. I can. Thank you.